Now, if you haven't seen the Lighthouse of Alexandria, unfortunately, you've missed your opportunity. It was brought down by an earthquake several hundred years ago. However, since it's one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, it continues to symbolize what we find captivating as human beings. And because we find it captivating, we know there's something here for us. There's something valuable that we can take. And since it's a lighthouse, it shows us how to use light. And it works. We have lighthouses all over the world now based on this model. So when we study the Lighthouse of Alexandria, we're going to look at how to use light. Particularly as a ruler, the will utilizes the mind, and the mind crafts images out of light. The mind isn't light. It makes pictures of light against a dark backdrop. So the lighthouse shows us externally how that's supposed to happen. So the lighthouse is like the mind and the projection is the image that's coming out of the mind and going into the world and having effects. And we want to look at those effects and understand how the mind is going to use the light with the intention of ruling a kingdom. So when the ruler utilizes light and makes an image in the mind, the first intention is to reflect to welcome. You want to welcome people into your kingdom. And even the idea of welcome has a sunniness to it, a boisterous, a radiance. You want to envelop everyone into your kingdom that you desire. And the light, the images that you make in your mind and bring out into the world, displays that welcome. The lighthouse of Alexander Hill was known to be seen from 35 miles away, and that was a very welcomed sight to seafaring travelers who can see that and see home or see their destination. It's very welcoming to have that kind of image in the distance moving you towards your destination. So using the light as a ruler, the first job is to reflect the light you have inside of you, bring it out through the mirror of your mind to welcome people. Then there's a need to warn. From time to time, life has its storms and the mind is closest to the spiritual realm. So it can endure the storms better. It's not as concerned what's happening externally as much as the body or the heart. So the mind can be this bastion that shows and helps people see what's happening in the storm, giving clarity, giving vision, giving insight into the tumultuous times that bother us as human beings. You say, well, I can see a lighthouse doing that, but what about a person? Well, we have a fun little graphic for that. Here we have a feminine will standing on a lighthouse surrounded by the storms and she's displaying her image, welcoming and warning those who come near. This is how she is choosing to do that and it is a graphic display of how the will projects that image amidst the turmoil of life. So as you welcome and you warn to give safe passage to those who you want into your kingdom, there does need to be a wording. You must cast light to welcome and to push away those that you don't desire. Now, there's an ancient story about the lighthouse of Alexandria that the brass mirror up top could reflect the sunlight so intently it could light the sails of ships on fire. Now, that's probably just a story told down through the ages, but it's a vivid example of what light can also do and what, as a ruler, light must be used for. There's a silly idea that we should just welcome everybody into our kingdom. Everybody, you know, just welcome and invite them all in. But currently, there's over 7 billion people on the planet. How do you welcome and invite everyone in? Of course you can't. It's a silly notion. Your ambitious is to achieve something very specific. There's only going to be a certain number of people who can work with you toward that specific ambition. So don't be greedy and invite everyone. Invite the people that are going to help you achieve your vision. So even in Alexandria, they had friends and they had foes. The lighthouse wasn't there to invite everybody from the Mediterranean Sea or the whole world, just the friends and the trades and the skilled individuals that they wanted to be partners with for whatever Egypt was up to at that time. 
If you don't project your light toward, this is where you end up at. You have these complex systems of trying to make decisions on who should come to your parties, who should come to your dinners, who should come to your gatherings, and it's just a mess. You can't figure out who's supposed to be there and who's shouldn't be there. But you can't invite anybody, everybody. You must select, you must ward off those who are not going to be partners with you. So how you do that is you project your light. You create the images in your mind and then you fill your world with those images. You, your body being the most potent image, and it just shines light. And if someone comes near this light, like the individual in this picture here, they can sense and see whether they belong or whether they don't. If they don't belong, it doesn't mean they're evil. They just don't belong with you. You're trying to accomplish something specific. And if they can't help you towards that specific outcome, then they can go somewhere else and find their place there. So project your light, project your intentions, bring your images out to the world, and those around you will be able to make the decision on their own. So as you welcome, as you warn and give safe passage, and as you ward off those who are not going to be most effective in your kingdom, you can see how to use light to build a kingdom. Because as a will, your images of light simultaneously envelop and exclude.